everybody! Do the new Nintendo 2DS XL Shuffle! Who gives a sh**? This may be one of the most unnecessary or strange revisions a Nintendo handheld or console has ever had. I mean, this falls right in line with something like the Wii Mini. But even with the Wii Mini, I mean, that's just so pointless that it's kind of like, it's almost charming in a way. The new Nintendo 2DS XL has like, at least like a slight amount of purpose, which just makes it that much more unnecessary. Like, who was this for? And I know that makes absolutely no sense, but like, l let's go over this, okay? The original Nintendo 3DS launched in 2011 and was a pretty flawed design. You know, it was functional, but it wasn't the best looker. It had pretty mediocre battery life. It just wasn't the greatest thing in the world. And also it was a bit smaller. So about a year and a half later, we got the Nintendo 3DS XL, pretty much a bigger version of the original. Had slightly better battery life, a bit of a different design, uh, you know, it, it was overall just a bigger 3DS, but they did take it as an opportunity to actually go in and kind of like, you know, revise a couple things here and there. I wouldn't consider the Nintendo 3DS XL to be on the same level as like the DS Lite from the original DS or something like that, but it was definitely a step up from the original. And then a year after that, we got the Nintendo 2DS. So the entire point of this was, hey, let's have a cheap, affordable 3DS on the market. You know, something to just kind of get you in the door, you know, just a way to play 3DS games. You had an incredibly unique design overall, which may appeal to you, may have not. But overall, I think the 2DS in the 3DS lineup had the most apparent purpose. Like, everybody knew why the 2DS existed. The 3DS's 3D effect did have some controversy surrounding it. You know, overall, it didn't matter all that much, but you know, if people wanted to fuss about it, uh, they definitely could have. I mean, there's a reason why all 3DS games with the 3D effect do clearly say on the box, oh, we'll only use this if you're seven. If you're under the age of seven, can run. Oh, it could damage your eyes. Oh my God, a Nintendo handheld that could damage your eyes? Somebody call a priest. Now, this way you have a model of the 3DS that doesn't have that pesky 3d effect on it which also lowers the cost and you know hey you might find this design more comfortable than the standard 3ds design you know like it, it all added up to like hey you know you want a cheaper handheld with none of the bells and whistles you just want to play a nintendo game or two this is for you and then the year after that we got revisions of the original 3ds and 3DS XL. Uh, these ones having increased horsepower, the C stick for added camera control. You also had ZL and ZR buttons. So just the definitive 3DS models. But you wouldn't know that based on their names, the new 3DS and new 3DS XL. What the hell does that mean? Especially considering we're getting to the point where the new 3DS and new 3DS XL, they're old as shit. The naming was definitely confusing, using the term new to describe pretty much like a pro version of the original 3DS models. I mean, yes, you aren't technically wrong. These are new versions of the old 3DS systems, but my God, video games are already considered new, used, old, retro, new, special, modern. I don't know. It just makes things more complicated. Oh my God, this is a used new 3DS off. At this point, I would say the 3DS lineup was complete. There wasn't really much reason for anything extra at this point. Of course, you look at the 2DS and you kind of say like, oh, well, you can have all these different variants of that. Uh, why don't we have a Nintendo 2DS XL, a new Nintendo 2DS, a new Nintendo 2DS XL? Oh, God. Like I said, I genuinely do believe the 3DS lineup before this was fine. There was nothing else you really needed to add. In 2016, the 3DS lineup on store shelves was the new 3DS XL for $200, the 2DS for $80, and the new 3DS was kind of just like there in North America. Like it officially released, but barely. Initially in February of 2015, we got the new 3DS XL over here, but not the regular new 3DS. Uh, that just wasn't coming out in North America until it kind of like soft released. In like September of 2015, they launched like an Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer bundle. Like, like that was originally the only way that model released here
here in North America. And since then, they kind of just did like these special edition releases where they'd bundle it with like some unique face plates and maybe a game and that was about it. But I remember in late 2016, they had this like Black Friday release. It was like a hundred bucks and it came with like these unique Mario face plates. So the new 3DS was kind of seen as like a little specialty cutesy item, I guess. But for the most part, it was pretty much new 3DS XL, original 2DS. So I understand the concept that you kind of want a middle ground. You know, you don't want just the worst possible thing and the best possible thing. You want something in the middle for somebody who doesn't want all the bells and whistles of the most expensive thing, but they don't want the bottom of the barrel 2DS bullshit. Uh, to that I say, you already have the new Nintendo 3DS, which you priced at $99. Yes, I know it was a Black Friday price, but at the same time, I'm like, it's a hundred bucks and it's like, it's the new 3DS. It has everything. It has all these extra buttons, the better horsepower. You can play the games that are exclusive to the new 3DS like Xenoblade 3D. Uh, apparently who gives a damn? Because in spring of 2017, we got the announcement of the new 2DS XL. Why? Right after the Nintendo Switch launched. Uh, now, to be fair, Nintendo had a hard time giving up on the 3DS. The 3DS was their moneymaker during one of the worst periods of the company's history. So they had no problem giving up on Wii U, but the 3DS, when they announced this brand new console, when it was up in the air if Nintendo could even viably make consoles anymore, their handheld business has always been a success. They have always dominated the handheld space. So it made sense to just move on from Wii U and just have the Nintendo Switch positioned as like their home console successor. When in reality, it was actually the successor to both their handheld and home consoles. Nintendo's done this kind of nonsense before when they act like, oh yeah, this new system, this isn't a successor to the thing it's a successor to. When they announced the Nintendo DS, they were like, this isn't a successor to the Game Boy Advance. No, not at all. It, it's it's the successor to the Game Boy Advance, buddy. And that's what they wanted to do with the Switch. I mean, like a couple years into that console's lifespan, it was obvious like, hey, this is Nintendo's handheld and home console. You have the Nintendo Switch Lite. You have all these series of games that were always only on Nintendo handhelds, now finally on the Nintendo Switch, so making their home console debut. In many cases, it's fair to consider the Switch to be more of a handheld than a home console. But in the first few years of its life, uh, it was strictly considered like, oh yeah, this is a Nintendo home console. And I'm not gonna refute that, but I think it's also fair to say it's it's strictly a Nintendo handheld console. It, it's a hybrid, it's both. And the idea of having just one system on the market for both handheld and home console was a risky move for Nintendo. So it only made sense that they would continue supporting the 3DS for a couple of years into the Switch's life to ensure that like, hey, like if, if this Switch thing doesn't work out, like we, we can just keep making stuff for this handheld with a with a 120p screen so as much as the new nintendo 2ds xl didn't make like a whole lot of sense when it came to the practicality of everything uh i i feel like they potentially put it out to just further showcase that the 3ds ain't going anywhere hey we're still supporting this thing but i mean I guess it makes some sense. The power of two, yeah, <laughs> shut up. Everything about the new 2DS has always been incredibly strange to me. I mean, let's start with the name itself. New Nintendo 2DS XL. That just hurts to say. It's just a little bizarre we have a Nintendo 2DS and a new Nintendo 2DS XL. There's no in between. That Those are the two 2DS models we have. But that's just supposed to represent like, hey, you know, like these have bigger screens and also this plays new 3DS software. So it's obvious Nintendo kind of wanted there to be like maybe like a lower maximum price for the 3DS family of systems because around this time, like it became harder to find like the actual new 3DS XL. This was kind of the go-to model of 3DS at the time. And 3D just wasn't as popular as it once was. Pretty much all 3DS games that were coming out were lacking 3D effects. I mean, here's a game that launched day and date alongside the new 2DS XL in July of 2017. Hey, Pikmin, plays only in 2D. I guess they just wanted to put out a new model of the 3DS that was, you know, a bit cheaper than the new 3DS XL. Uh, and they could definitely make more money on, uh, because, uh, 
Th this this feels like a hunk of fucking garbage. Okay, it's really not that bad. And I've talked about this at length before, but you know what? Let's go over this, all right? 2017 was when a lot of people online, like I, w I, I always watch videos about stupid Nintendo junk, man. That, that's like, that that's like my love language. And around this time, you would see so many people just being like, just gushing about Nintendo because of the Switch, people being just like over the moon excited for every single thing Nintendo related, and hey, I don't have a problem with that. If you wanna be just super positive about every video game coming out, more power to you, but I will say, I can, I can smell bullshit. And sometimes you can just tell when some people are just being just like, they don't really care, but they're kind of hyping it up for the camera. And everybody does that on YouTube. I'm not gonna blame people. I do that on YouTube. Do you really think I throw all my copies of Chibi Robo Ziplash in the toilet? Yeah, I don't throw all of them in there. But man, all these little reviewing gremlins who acted like this system was the definitive 3DS. Come on, man. To be fair, that's their opinion. I'm not gonna act like uh, I'm right and they're wrong or anything like that. Uh, but, you know, hey, hey, let, let's just have a fun little debate here. I humbly disagree that this is the definitive 3DS model. There's just a lot strange about this design. They just kind of tweaked a lot about the 3DS design. It feels like they almost rethunk uh, how everything works with the 3DS. So here we have a new 3DS XL. Now, as we can see, the two cameras are right here on this model of the 3DS, and in fact, all models of the 3DS outside of the original 2DS. But on the new 2DS XL, uh, they're on the bottom here. And then the front facing camera on all 3DS models are, you know, right here. Uh, on the new 2DS XL, uh, it's on the hinge here. So it also is like slightly peeking out when you close the system. Okay. And the top screen itself, I saw a lot of people go like, oh my God, that looks so slick. It looks like a smartphone. And that's all I heard so many people say. That's almost like it was like, oh wow, this this 3DS looks so fucking awesome. This top screen looks like an iPhone. Like who cares? There's a couple weird things like how the uh, cartridge slot here, it's like this giant flap. Hey, at the very least with this, this is where you put your micro SD card. One of the biggest problems with the new 3DS line of systems was how the SD card has to be inserted by taking off the entire back plate. That is like the worst thing about these systems. I mean like, okay, you only really have to change your SD card once for the most part, but it sucks. The top here has this ridge design that, you know, you can kind of make noise by scratching uh, and uh, has like this diagonal Nintendo logo in the corner here. I mean, hey, you know, I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting that they definitely went for a different vibe, but uh, the entire thing feels uh, pretty cheap. This feels like a cheap, weird iPad case or something you'd buy at Walmart for like 1788. I have nothing to base that analogy off of, but damn it, it felt right saying it. The buns all feel fine, but it, it just all has like this really cheap aura to it all. Like this genuinely feels like a handheld created out of limitations on just trying to make the most money off of this handheld. Like, hey, we don't wanna blow too much money on the production of these things, so uh, let's just make a 3DS for the cheapest we possibly can, while also allowing it to play modern new 3DS software. And hey, it'll also show that we're definitely serious about supporting the 3DS. Definitely. Like, that's all this feels like. So, like, yeah, I guess it serves a purpose of like, okay, let's have like a 2DS system, but it's but it's much better, you know? It's for people that, you know, kind of want, you know, a few of the bells and whistles of the new 3DS XL, but they don't really care about 3D because it's 2017 and nobody gives a damn about 3D anymore. And we can save some money by taking that 3D out. So, you know, oh, it's $150 and blah, blah, blah. You know, you just go through all this nonsense and it's just like, okay, Fine, I get it. You know, there's definitely people that don't want the cheap ass 2DS for $80, but they also don't want to spend $200 on a new 3DS XL. So here's your middle ground, new 2DS XL for 150. But I'm just like, you had that middle ground with the new 3DS, the regular size new 3DS. You were selling for $99. It was cheaper than this thing. And it could play all games possible and it had 3D if you wanted it, but you could just Turn the 3D off! But no, here's this just... 
nothing. Look at this stylus, man. This sucks. How am I supposed to hold this thing? I think it's jumping around in my hand. I mean, it's a 3DS, that's for damn sure. Like everything runs fine. This has the same internals as a new 3DS XL, which is the definitive 3DS model. Like this is a perfectly reasonable 3DS. I can't deny that. But when it comes to how it feels to play, it, it, it does feel much cheaper than a lot of the other models. Even the original 2DS, because that has such a unique funk to the design. Some people genuinely find it to be the most comfortable 3DS model, you know, and I can't take that away from them. Uh, I don't agree with them, uh, but I'm sure we can agree on something. This isn't the most comfortable 3DS, that's for damn sure. But you know what? It was the 3DS for the final few years of that handheld's life. Whenever you'd see 3DS footage in a Nintendo Direct post-April 2017, uh, they would be showing it being played on a new 2DS XL. It, it was like the definitive model. But you know what really stung about this whole thing? It got the coolest damn special editions! For some reason there, Nintendo did a lot of new 2DS XL special edition designs, which included like these unique designs that had like height or just like different textures and all this. So here are two that I have. This is the Pokeball edition 2DS XL. Uh, and, you know, obviously it looks like a Pokeball from Pokemon having just the red and black design. That is really, really slick, <laughs> even on the inside. Like, this this looks awesome. But it's the outside that really steals the show. The fact that it looks just like the Pokeball. And you also have a pressable button here. That, that is so neat. Sure, it doesn't do anything, but, like... Do you need it to? It doesn't make it any less cool. It's just such a unique special edition. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Here we have the Dragon Quest XI 2DS XL. Now here we have a slime here that is slightly raised and metallic, shiny. It's just really, really interesting. And they had a few more. They had some Minecraft editions uh, with a unique texture. Like, you know, the front of the 2DS had that blocky Minecraft design. So, you know, you kind of could feel every single pixel of like the creeper's face. They also had a Hyrulean shield design and you know, that had some raised iconography. Uh, it's kind of just a weird ass thing. Like wh why did they go this hard for the new 2DS XL designs? Cause damn it, it's the new 2DS XL. Nobody gives a shit about this thing. And can you blame anybody? Like there's no purpose to getting this at this point. Obviously if you're buying it secondhand and you just want a 3DS that will play every game, like, like you want to play the new 3DS selection of software, all like fucking five games. But to be fair, the new 3DS line of systems are just much easier to use. I mean, just playing Mario Kart 7 on my new 2DS XL there, uh, just being able to hit the home button and it immediately just goes to the home menu. Like, yeah, th there is some quality of life improvements by the new 3DS line of systems. And for sure, compared to a new 3DS XL, which is definitely far higher in demand, the new 2DS XL is gonna be a little cheaper. But at that point, I would just recommend, like, just save up a little extra money, just get the new 3DS XL, or maybe spoil yourself a bit with the new 3DS regular edition. This is like one of my favorite Nintendo handheld designs. It's so damn nice. I love this stupid ass thing. And I love of this stupid ass thing, but ironically, it does the job. You can play your 3DS games on it in 2D, you know, with, uh, you know, whatever. The power of two, uh, But it is far from the 3DS I'd recommend people get. I think this is like an interesting collectible and uh, if it's the only 3DS that you have, like you could do, you could do worse. I like that it's bigger than like the regular size 3DS handhelds. Uh, but other than that, like, yeah, man, just get a new 3DS XL. Everything feels a lot more premium, and it's really, like, not that much more expensive than something like this. If you're gonna go for a new 2DS XL, I'd recommend going for the special editions because there are a lot of neato special edition 2DS XLs. But when it comes to its purpose in the 3DS lineup, this just felt like an excuse to release a 3DS that cost less for them to make. Uh, the 2DS, for sure, is kind of that, but they pass the savings on to you. 
Uh, this one just kind of felt like it's just like, like, bro, you just sold this for $99 in November of 2016, just a few months before this launched for $150. And it has less features. You don't have the 3D effect. Like, come on. The 2DS genuinely was so much bang for your buck. Like, yes, it was cheap, but like, you know, it's 80 bucks, 80 bucks for just, hey, you can play pretty much any Nintendo DS game on this thing. Pretty much all the 3DS games. Hell, you can download Netflix on the 2DS. You could you could watch Netflix on this thing, man. It, it, it really sucked, but like, you, damn, you could do it. The new 2DS XL <laughs> honestly felt more like a scam. But at this point, I can look back at it and appreciate its bizarreness. But that's honestly all I can really do with it. It's just not gonna be my go-to 3DS. Uh, back when it first launched and now, and I don't think ever. And you wanna know why? Because as cool as the special editions are, uh, none of them are Pikachu nipple edition.